Good morning, guys. Today is Tuesday. We're going to be um, setting up our class journals and our portfolios. So when you start class today, you're going to come to this um, file at the top of your Schoology. You'll start with your warm-ups. Once you're done with the second warm-up slide, you're going to come to journal setup. Um, those of you who are learning at home have a couple of options. You can set up a physical journal just like what you're going to see us do in class. Um, but in order to do that, you're going to have to print the resources that were loaded into Schoology for you. I cannot assume that y'all have access to printers at home. If you can do that and that's what you choose to do, great. For those of you who cannot do that, um, this link here where it says at home learners who cannot print, you're going to click that and watch that video. Um, there are some solutions there um, for how to take screenshots and how to snip those images that have been uploaded. And then I have given you within Schoology a link to a digital journal that you can edit and do that way. So at home learners, you can choose either one of these methods. However, in the class video today, I'm only going to be showing um, the in class option. So in that warm up, what are some things that are specific only to chemical changes? Anyone? Yeah. It makes a whole new substance. substance. It makes a new substance, absolutely. Thank you. There's usually some sort of a proof that a chemical change occurred, and we'll talk about what those proofs are later. Um, what about a physical change? What are some things that are only, um, only describe a physical change? Yes, sir. Changes shape or form? Yeah. Just the appearance, right? It's not a new something. Um, I've just changed its shape, its form. Um, I may have changed the phase. So one thing that usually stumps students is they're given um, water liquid to water vapor. That's not a chemical change. It's still water. It's just changed its state. It's gone from a liquid to a gas. Um, same thing can be said if you're going from an ice cube to gas. It's still water. It's just changed its state of matter. So what do chemical and physical changes have in common? Yes, sir. Both changes. Yeah, they're just changes. Something about that is changing. Either you're making that new product or you're changing the physical properties of that thing in some way. Um, you should have in front of you now a copy or a piece of paper from each of the copy piles on the supply table. You should have two yellow post-it notes scissors, glue, a composition notebook, and a data folder. Um, we're not going to be using the Chromebooks again until we do our exit ticket today. So if you want to push it kind of out of the way for now, that would be A-OK. -okay. The videos that we're going to watch, I will be showing to you up on the screen so you don't have to have access to your Chromebook. Um, we're going to be setting up our interactive science notebooks first today. Guys, these are very, very important to this course. They become like your textbook. Also, they're one of the main tools we use in the Triwizard Tournament. It's really our reference material. It's what we go back to to review and to pull in the information that we don't know. If you remember when we went over our class rules and procedures, everyone look at the back of the room at that bookshelf. Your class period is that top shelf, okay? Your table color, so you're either green, yellow, purple, pink, blue, or orange, right? Your table color coordinates to a box on that shelf. I can't tell what that is. So once we're done setting up journals, you guys are going to get your table box. You're going to put your journals in it, and you're going to put them on the right shelf, and that's just where they're going to live. And every day when you come in, you're going to add that to your steps that you do when you enter the room. You're going to check the supply table. Get your Chromebook, grab your journal box every single day. Give me a thumbs up if you understand. Awesome. We'll give Bo a second to get everything that he needs. Bo, have you grabbed a composition book and folder from the front? You what? Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, why does it keep doing this? Some of my links don't work. All right, let me fix this so I don't start getting emails. So we 
we are doing journal setup. Um, there's data folder, so that's for journal setup. That's not it. This is it. All right. Y'all give me just a second. I'm going to get this link loaded. I don't know why it's not working anymore, but we'll reload it. So it works for everybody the rest of the day. What in the world? There, it works that time. So y'all are gonna follow along. I will pause several times because I know it's gonna take you longer. I'm gonna be walking you through today how to set up your journal for science class. There are a few supplies that you need if you're learning in the classroom today. You should have picked these supplies up from the table as you came in the door. You're gonna need yellow post-it notes, probably about two of them. You're gonna need a Costas house. You're gonna need a copy of the Cornell Way. And you're going to need reporting category one teaks, a manila envelope, a pen, scissors, can't remember if I said glue stick. I also have Elmer's. Um, if you have access to Elmer's, you're welcome to use it at home or at school. I don't have enough Elmer's to give every student some. Um, so the stuff that we use this for, if you want to um, beef it up with some packing tape or just however you can make it work, it's fine with me. So those are the supplies that you're going to need in order to follow along today. For those of you who are at home, these copies, I'm going to load into a folder in Schoology that says at home learners um, journal copies and you can print these at home. All of our content this year is color coded by reporting category. We start learning in reporting category one and reporting category one is yellow. So I've printed my reporting category one teaks on yellow paper. If you are at home and you have access to yellow paper, great. If you don't, simply print this out and use a yellow matte pencil or crayon and just kind of scribble over it where you can still read the teats, but you can tell that it's color-coded yellow. All right, so let's begin. First thing that I want you to do on the outside of your journal is just write your name. I'd hold off on putting class period and class schedules change, but you can go ahead and put your, um, your name. We're going to open our folder to the inside front cover and we're going to take our manila envelope. For those of you who are at home, if you don't have access to a manila envelope, you can simply wait to complete this step if and when you return to campus. Um, if you don't, this is basically a storage um, location for our Cornell Notes in class. You can just set up a folder at home or whatever works for you to keep your Cornell Notes safe while we're going through the Cornell Way, which we're going to learn about here in a couple of days. So you see this side has the bread. I want to put glue on the side that does not have the bread. I'm going to use my Elmer's, but if you're in class, just use your glue stick. And if so I placed one Elmer's glue on every table so that you guys can glue this down. The glue sticks just aren't strong enough to hold the folder down. Again, if it doesn't stick well, you can always go back and amend it with packing tape or duct tape, whatever, whatever works for you. So I'm going to glue this down inside the front cover. Now I should have said, that for our class journals, the thing that works best are the ones that have the paper cover. If your journal has that hard plastic cover, obviously this step's gonna be difficult for you. Nothing really wants to glue down or stick to that hard plastic cover. Now, the exception that I can give you or um, the workaround for this is to use staples and just put one, one here going this way. I'll draw the orientation. You could put one staple there. You could put one staple there. And then down here at the bottom, you could put one here and one here. You don't want to staple across the top because then you've sealed this closed and you can't use it. Um, but if you don't have a paper cover journal, that's one way to get that hard plastic journal um, to work for this step. On this folder, with a marker, a pen, I want you to put um, C notes in progress. And I also want you to put ticket storage. We have a classroom ticket system for incentives. And some people choose to hoard their stickers, their tickets all year and wait to try to put them in the drawing until the last six weeks. All right, one thing that's not in the video that I also want you to write on this 
folder that you've glued to the cover, I want you to put Boykins. So this folder on the outside of it is where you're gonna stick any of those Happy Boykins or Angry Boykins you get during the year this year. Um, and during the Triwizard Tournament, we can redeem those for house points. <laughs> so it'll say C Notes in Progress, it'll say Ticket Storage, and then you can make another bullet that says Boykins, and you can literally <laughs> stick them to this, um, to this envelope in your folder. Um, so if you're choosing to do that, this is one place where you could keep those tickets safe. You don't have to do that. Um, it's just a strategy that I've seen some kids use in the past. So that's inside your front cover. This first sheet here is your cover page. We're gonna put your name. You're gonna put eighth grade science. Um, later on in the year, probably within the next few weeks, you will be assigned houses, um, just like in Harry Potter. You're either going to be Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, or Ravenclaw. And at that point, I will be giving you a house logo coordinated to your house color. This is my journal from last year. I am Slytherin um, to glue on the front of your journal. But we're going to hold off on that because I'm waiting for classes to level, etc., before I make those rosters of who's in what house. So hopefully you're caught up to me. You've made your cover page. We're now going to turn to the back of that cover page. And as I told you, you guys are going to be learning a new note-taking system. Some of you may have used it before. Um, majority of you probably haven't or you've used it um, maybe in the wrong way. So the Cornell way is the method of taking Cornell notes. Again, we're going to go over this more in detail in class later. Um, but the Cornell way is more like a system and less like a format. A lot of people think Cornell notes and they just see in their head that template that you use to take the notes on. You think that if you take the notes on that sheet of paper, you've done the Cornell notes. That is wrong. Cornell notes are a, a method of learning. They are a intentional tool meant to increase the number of meaningful repetitions you have with that content. Again, I'm gonna go into all of this in detail much later, but I want you to have a copy of what the Cornell Way is in your journal. So you're gonna take this paper, you're going to fold it hamburger style, just like this. You are going to put glue, since this is the back of the page, and this is the top margin. I'm going to put one line of glue along the top margin of the back of that page. I'm then going to glue it down behind my cover page in my journal. One of the key um, steps in taking Cornell notes, um, one of the key aspects of Cornell notes is writing questions in the left-hand column. The quality of a question is tied directly to the level of the question. What you're looking at now is Costa's house. I've trimmed mine. Yours will probably need to be trimmed as well. That's why I asked you to have scissors. So go ahead and trim yours up neatly. We're going to label this page Costa's house. So I ran my hand through my own ink. So the quality of the question increases as you go up levels in the house. So this would be a low level question, and this would be a high level question. Our goal is to get to and be able to answer those high level questions, okay? So you're gonna increase in rigor as you go up the levels of the house. So we're gonna go ahead, if I've written it on mine, be sure you write it on yours. I'm gonna put some glue on the back of this. Remember, if you're watching in a video, you can pause this as needed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause here and let you guys get caught up to where I am. So I've cut out the house. I've labeled my page. And now I'm gluing it down to this page. So I'll give you a few seconds to get that done. Here we go. Glue this down in my journal. I want you to put over here that rigor increases up the levels. And this is 
just watch Andy walking. Whoops. Again, that says rigor increases up the levels. You're going to write that beside your Costas house in your journal. You're going to label your bottom level to be um, low and your top level to be high. And you can just do that with an L and an H. past that right there okay four level two and level three questions on your C notes so guys I'm sure you're you're realizing that as I write it's hard to see what I'm writing and it's because I'm left-handed I promise that when I'm leading y'all in notes or writing something in your journal in class I realize this and when I'm done writing, I will, I will pull my hand back so that you can see what was written. Just be patient with it. There's no way that I can just swap hands for you so you can see what I'm writing as I'm writing. Because I'm gonna tell you a secret. I am lazy. Anytime I can abbreviate something, I'm going to abbreviate it. That's one of the, the beautiful parts of note taking is learning how to um, shorten what you have to write. So in this class, anytime that we are taking notes or writing in our journals, if you can shorten a word in any way and still understand what that meant when you revisit those notes, I encourage you to do that. On our notes, I don't want you writing incomplete sentences. I don't want you writing out whole words if you don't have to. Work smarter, not harder. So if you're having trouble reading what that says from the screen, over here on the side it says rigor increases up levels. And then down across the bottom, it says use for L2 and L3 questions. That means level two and level three questions on C notes. Um, our warm up today was a Venn diagram. Looking at this Costas house, what level of thinking is that? Yeah, it's a level two. It's a compare and a contrast activity, which is a processing activity, which is a level two question. You should have your Costas house down. The next thing that we're gonna do is turn to the next page. We're gonna skip the back of that page. We're gonna go to the next blank page. Here you're gonna use your reporting category one TEKS. TEKS stand for um, Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills. Guys, if you know your TEKS, then you know what you're going to be tested over. You know what's gonna be on the star test. As we go throughout this year, I'm gonna teach you about how they decide what questions to include on the STAR test and how you can know which TEKS are more important than other TEKS. If you see this RS here, that stands for a readiness standard. The SS stands for supporting standard. Readiness standards are tested extremely more prolifically on STAR test than your supporting standards. Um, they break it down by reporting category and they say exactly how many questions are going to come from your readiness and how many questions are going to come from your supporting standards um, on the STAR test. So if you can read through your TEKS when you're done with the reporting category and you understand every bit of it, the chances are you really did well and you understand that reporting category. So here's what I'm going to have you do. We are going to put glue on the back of this. Remember, if you're at home and you didn't have yellow paper, you can just kind of go over this with a matte pencil or something. We're going to glue it down right in the center of this page. In reporting category one, there are a few units. We review some information. So the eighth grade star test is cumulative. You haven't taken a star test in science since fifth grade. Well, eighth grade, they want to test everything you've learned since then. So because of that, I don't just teach you eighth grade content. I teach you every TEK that will be tested that you've covered since sixth grade. So if you look here at reporting category one, these that start with eight, they're the TEKs for this year. The ones that start with seven, you learned last year. And the one that starts with six, you learned in sixth grade. Um, I'm gonna be sure you know all of that, not just the new eighth grade stuff. So we're gonna review those sixth and seventh grade TEKs. We learn about the periodic table. By the way, I usually abbreviate that PT. We learn about atoms. 
and we learn about chemical formulas and reactions. And here's my abbreviation for reactions. I'll give you a second to get that down. So I'll pause here for you guys to, to be sure you have all of that written on this page in your journal. Again, the units are review 6th and 7th, periodic table, which I abbreviate PT, atoms, and then chemical formulas and reactions, and I abbreviate reactions RXN. For reaction, I use RxN. Now, you don't have to use that. That's just kind of my hack. You can use anything you want as long as it makes sense to you. And was that chemical reactions? <laughs> chemical formulas and reactions. But wait, there's more. Now, we're going to get a yellow post-it note. On the edge of this yellow post-it note, we're going to write RC1. That's the non-sticky edge, In RC1, guys. the star test pulls 11 star questions. Now, these are actually dual coded. All questions can be dual coded with your process teaks, which we'll get into what those are when we set up our uh, data folder. So we're gonna put this post-it along this side of our journal. Notice how it sticks out. What I've actually done, I've just made a tab in my journal that's color coded to the color of this reporting category that I can access at any time that I wanna reference material from reporting. Do what? Oh, oh. Yeah, no. Okay, star question. Category one. RC1, 11 star one questions. more post-it. Yellow, of course. On the top edge of it, I'm going to put review. This is going to go up here along the top. I'm going to put it all the way over to my margin. Again, I've made a tab. When I close, the, put that too far. Let's get that over when I close my journal, I'm going to fold this down so you can see. Fold it down my manila envelope tab. Now I have a reporting category one yellow tab at the top that says review. So my reporting categories are going to be down my right hand side. My units are going to be across the top. So this is what you should have done thus far. And now your journal is set up and um, ready for our first day of instruction. Congratulations. Um, give me a fist of five on getting that finished. I mean, y'all are y'all are pretty much caught up, or we need we need five minutes. We need one minute. As y'all finish up, I'm gonna come by your table with a piece of duct tape for everyone at your table. This duct tape is gonna go down the spine, the binding of your composition notebook. Um, every class period will have its own colored duct tape. And I will put a piece on your shelf next to where your boxes are so you know what duct tape goes to which class period. Here's why we do this. Let's say you forget to put your journal up and it's eighth period and somebody finds your journal. All they have to do is look at the duct tape on the spine and they can immediately figure out which shelf your journal belongs on, okay? So that's why we do this. It just helps us not to get them disorganized or lost. So I'm gonna come by and put a piece on everyone's table. We need to do today before we can go. Um, so let's see if this link with Anthology works. The data folders. No, that is so bizarre. I wonder why some work and others don't. We will fix it. That's our journal, data folder. I'm going to get this link updated and then we'll begin. So go ahead and get out your bratted pocket folder and have it handy. Alright, it 
should work now. Let's refresh. Tuesday, data folders. Hey, you guys. Today, we're going to be working on setting up our data folders. These data folders are important because they become a tool um, that holds your personalized data. After every single assessment and test that we take in this class, we have a whole metacognition process we go through where you guys are, well, we correct our tests together in class. And I break it down by teak. And then you guys are able to check and X each question to figure out which teaks you mastered on that test and which teaks you did not master on that test. We then transfer that information into your master document, which is this data folder. And come end of the school year, you're able to pull out this data folder, look at your um, teak pages that we're about to put in this and decide real quick um, what reporting categories and what teaks you did the best on and which ones you didn't do so good on. And what that allows you to do is to target in So you can imagine um, by the end of the year, all the data that will be present in this folder. Um, and we set up our portfolio folders that house all of our tests and everything is color coded. Um, so if you get back to your data folder and you realize that RC2, you really um, didn't master a lot of those teaks, then all you'll have to do is go to your portfolio at the front of the room and pull every pink um, assessment to study. They've already been corrected because we did that together in class. Um, and look at everything behind the pink tab in your journal. So this really just helps to streamline the process of preparing you best for those state assessments. So um, those of you who are learning at home, I'll put a folder within Schoology that has links to all of these documents for you to print. For those of you who are in the classroom physically, you should have picked these up from the supply table on your way in the room. So first, this is your cover sheet. You're gonna go ahead and put your name. Here where it says class put science, but also put your class period. And then um, the name's gonna repeat because I am Stoli and the teacher is also Stoli, but yours, yours will look different than that. So this is the cover sheet for your data folder. Everyone should have purchased a bratted pocket folder. So these are your brads down the center and these are your pockets. You need to pull up your rats so that you can slide these papers onto them. So my cover sheet is now going to go onto my brads. The next page that you need to find is the one that looks like this. It has the heading on it, star, eighth grade science, quick reference guide. If you look, these are your RC1 teaks. And RC1 is over. If I write it on mine, you need to write it on yours. Um, these are the same teaks that we glued in our journal, but we also need them in our data folder. So you see the brads or the holes here down the side? You're going to put those over your brads. This will be the second document in your folder. But wait, there's more. You see, there are actually teaks on the back of this. Now, these teaks are what are called your process skills. When I was talking to you through um, journal setup, I mentioned that process skills can be dual coded. Um, these are those skills that can be dual coded with any other TEAK from any other reporting category on any test that you take. Um, so this is like your safe practices during the lab, um, knowing how to interpret graphs and tables, um, knowing the history of certain things. Oftentimes, test questions are the content area and one of these process skills. So we're going to be tracking those somewhat as well. Um, the next page that I need you to find is the one that starts reporting category two. Um, these are your teaks for reporting category two. So we'll put RC2. And reporting cate category two is physics. Um, there are fewer teaks here, but this is actually the lowest performing reporting category across the state. It's very math heavy very concept heavy and a lot of kids step or suffer and struggle in reporting category two. I'm going to go ahead and slide that over the brads and, but wait, there's more. Reporting category three is on the back of that. Reporting category three, RC3. 
These, this is like your earth science. Um, a lot of kids um, enjoy this reporting category the most. The next page that I need you to find is the one that says RC4. Um, we're gonna put RC4 on this. And these are your life sciences. Things like biology. You had a little bit of life science in seventh grade and you'll hit that again in high school with your biology course. If you look at this, there are only one, two, three, four new life science concepts for eighth grade. The majority of those are seventh grade concepts. That's stuff you learned last year. But remember, um, I take my job seriously and I'm gonna teach you everything that you'll be tested over, not just the content for eighth grade. So we're gonna put this in our data folder next. Now you should have gotten, or you should have printed two of these. If you only grabbed one, you can pause your video and go get another one now. If you only printed one, you can pause your video and print another one. Yeah, y'all go grab two. If you only got one, get another one now. I'll wait. So, um, this is where we're going to monitor your progress. The tests for this class are pretty rigorous. Um, sometimes students start out failing them. Um, that's okay. Failure is a big part of learning. Um, when scientists are trying to make new discoveries or invent new things, they oftentimes fail hundreds of times um, before they actually get to a prototype that, that works. So, if you start this year off with low test scores, I don't want you to focus on the grade. I want you to focus on the progress. And that's why we chart our scores. For every test, you will be setting a goal ahead of time. You actually set that goal on test day. It's on your test packet. On the day that we do data, um, you'll get your actual score and you're gonna graph both of those. So you can see how you performed compared to how you wanted to perform. And then we do that for every test the goal is that eventually you're gonna see those scores increase. Right now, you don't need to write anything on these. You're simply going to lay them in the brads of your data folder. Now, we're gonna slip those brads through this um, grommet on the other side. I'm struggling, there we go. Now, we're gonna open that brad up and that's gonna hold these documents in place. Congratulations, you have now um, completed your data folder setup. All right, so these data folders, um, you guys see how on your first period shelf there's space? Like the, the boxes don't take up everything. Um, you're gonna push the boxes all the way to the right and data folders are gonna stack on the left-hand side of your shelf, one on top of the other. Um, so take a couple of minutes, finish up your data folder, and then one person from every table can collect those folders and put them back on our shelf. A couple of things need to happen before you go, and we have three minutes in which to do them. You need to put up your data folders. You need to sanitize your supplies with hand sanitizer and put them back on the supply table. And then you need to complete your exit ticket within Schoology. Um, and then you need to put up your technology. Um, your exit ticket for today, log in with your real name. And it is, it's a Twista Tuesday. If a twister picked you up, where would it take you? Or where would you like it to take you? So that's your exit ticket for today. Go ahead and finish up the things that you need to do. Um, and you've got about three minutes.